Chapter 4 Sai Baba's First Advent in Shirdi Mission of the Saints Shirdi a holy tirth personality of Sai Baba dictum of Gauli Bua appearance of Vittal Sheer Sagar story Das Ganu's bath in Prayag immaculate conception of Sai Baba and his first advent in Shirdi three vadas In the last chapter I described the circumstances which led me to write Sai Satcharita Let me now describe the first advent of Sai Baba in Shirdi. Mission of the Saints. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita chapter 4 7 8 that whenever there is a decay of dharma, righteousness and an ascendancy of unrighteousness, I manifest myself and for the protection of the virtuous, the destruction of the vicious and for the establishment of righteousness, I manifest myself in age after age. This is the mission of the Lord. and the sages and saints who are his representatives and who appear here at proper times help in their own way to fulfill that mission for instance when the twice born the brahmans the kshatriyas and the vaishyas neglect their duties and when the shudras try to usurp the rights of the higher classes when spiritual preceptors are not respected but humiliated when nobody cares for religious instructions when everybody thinks himself very learned when people begin to partake of forbidden foods and intoxicating drinks when under the cloak of religion people indulge in mal practices when people belonging when people belonging to different sects fight among themselves when brahmans fail to do sandhya adoration and the orthodox their religious practices when yogis neglect their meditation when people begin to think that wealth progeny wife are their sole concern and thus turn away from the true path of salvation then do saints appear and try to set matters right by their words and action they serve us as beacon lights and show us the right path and the right way for us to follow in this way many saints nivrti gnanadev muktabai namdev gora gonai ekanath tukaram narahari narsibai sajan kasai Savata Ramdas and various others did appear at various times to show the right path to the people and so presently came Sri Sai Baba of Shirdi Shirdi a holy tirth the banks of the Godavari river in the Ahmednagar district are very fortunate for they gave birth and refuge to many a saint prominent among them being Gnaneshwar Shirdi also falls in the Kopargaon taluka of the Ahmednagar district After crossing the Godavari River at Kopargaon one gets the way to Shirdi when you go three cars this is 9 miles you come to Nimgaon from where Shirdi is visible Shirdi is as famous and well known as other holy places like Gangapur Narsinwadi Audumbar on the banks of Krishna River as the devotee dhama ji flourished in and blessed mangal veda near pandarpur as samarth ramdas as sajjangad as shri narsimha saraswati at saraswati wadi So Sai Nath flourished at Shirdi and blessed it. Personality of Sai Baba. It is on account of Sai Baba that Shirdi grew into importance. Let us see what sort of a personage Sai Baba was. He conquered this samsar, worldly existence, which is very difficult and hard to cross. Peace or mental calm was his ornament, and he was the repository of wisdom. He was the home of Vaishnava devotees, most liberal, like Karna, amongst liberals. the quintessence of all essences he had no love for perishable things and was always engrossed in self realization which was his sole concern he felt no pleasure in the things of this world or of the world beyond his antarang heart was as clear as a mirror and his speech always rained nectar the rich or poor people were the same to him he did not know or care for honor or dishonor He was the lord of all beings. He spoke freely and mixed with all people. Saw the actings and dances of notch girls and heard gajal songs. Still, he swerved not an inch from samadhi, mental equilibrium. The name of Allah was always on his lips. When the world awoke, he slept, and while the world slept, he was vigilant. His abdomen inside was as calm as the deep sea. His ashram could not be determined. His ashram could not be determined, nor his actions could be definitely determined. his ashram could not be determined nor his actions could be definitely determined and though he sat and lived in one place he knew all the transactions of the world his darbar was imposing he told daily hundreds of stories still he swerved not an inch from his vow of silence he always leaned against the wall in the masjid or walked morning 
noon and evening towards Lindi, Nala and Chavadi. Still, he at times abided in the self. Though a Siddha, he acted like a Sadaka. He was meek, humble and egoless and pleased all. Such was Sai Baba and as Sai Baba's feet treaded the soil of Shirdi, it attained extraordinary importance. As Jnaneshwar elevated Alandi, Eknath did to Python, so Sai Baba raised Shirdi. Blessed are the grass leaves and stones of Shirdi, for they could easily kiss the holy feet of Sai Baba and take their dust on their head. Shirdi became to us devotees another Pandarpur, Jagannath, Dwaraka, Banaras, Kasi and Rameshwar, Badrikedar, Nasik, Trayambakeshwar, Ujjain and Mahakaleshwar or Mahabaleshwar Gokarn. Contact of Sai Baba in Shirdi was like our Veda and Tantra. It quieted our samsara, world consciousness and rendered self-realization easy. The darshan of Sri Sai was our yoga sadhana and talk to him removed our sins. Shampooing his legs was our bath in Triveni Prayag and drinking the holy water of his feet destroyed our desires. To us, his commands were Vedas and accepting and eating his Udi, sacred ashes and prasad was all purifying. He was our Shri Krishna and Shri Rama who gave us Sules and he was our Parabrahma, absolute reality. He was himself beyond the pair of Dwandwas, opposite, never dejected nor elated. He was always engrossed in his self as existence, knowledge and bliss. Shirdi was his center, but his field of action extended far wide to Punjab, Calcutta, North India, Gujarat, Dhaka, now in Bangladesh and Konkan. Thus, the fame of Sai Baba spread far and wide and people from all parts came to take his darshana and be blessed. By mere darshan, minds of people, whether pure or impure, would become at once quiet. They got here the same sort of unparalleled joy that devotees get at Pandarpur by seeing Vittal Rakumai. This is not an exaggeration. Consider what a devotee says in this respect. Dictum of Gauli Bua. An old devotee by name Gauli Bua, aged about 95 years, was a Varkari of Pandari. He stayed 8 months at Pandarpur and 4 months Ashada to Kartik, this is July to November, on the banks of the Ganges. He had an ass with him for carrying his luggage and a disciple as his companion. Every year, he made his Vari or trip to Pandarpur and came to Shirdi to see Sai Baba, whom he loved most. He used to stare at Baba and say, This is Pandarinath Vittal incarnate, the merciful lord of the poor and helpless. This Gauli Bua was an old devotee of Vitoba and had made many a trip to Pandari and he testified that Sai Baba was real Pandarinath. Vittal himself appeared. Sai Baba was very fond of remembering and singing God's name. He always uttered, Allah Malik, God is Lord, and in his presence made others sing God's name continuously day and night for seven days. This is called Nama Saptaha. Once he asked Daskanu Maharaj to do the Nama Saptaha, he replied that he would do it, provided he was assured that Vittal would appear at the end of the seventh day. Then Baba, placing his hand on his breast, assured him that certainly Vittal would appear, but that the devotee must be earnest and devout. The Dankapuri, Thakur of Thakurnath, the Pandari of Vittal, the Dwaraka of Ranchod, Krishna, is here, Shirdi. One need not go far out to see Dwaraka. Will Vittal come here from some outside place? He is here. Only when the devotee is bursting with love and devotion, Vittal will manifest himself here in Shirdi. After the Saptaha was over, Vittal did manifest himself in the following manner. Kaka Sahib Dixit was as usual sitting in meditation after the bath and he saw Vittal in a vision. When he went at noon for Baba's darshana, Baba asked him point blank, Did Vittal Patil come? Did you see him? He is a very truant fellow. Catch him firmly, otherwise he will escape if you be a little inattentive. This happened in the morning and at noon there was another Vittal darshana. One hawker from outside came there for selling 25 or 30 pictures of Vitoba. This picture exactly tallied with the figure that appeared in Kaka Sahib's vision. On seeing this and remembering Baba's words, Kaka Sahib Dixit was much surprised and delighted. He bought one picture of Vitoba and placed it in his shrine for worship. Bhagwant Rao Shir Sagar's story, how fond was Baba for Vittal worship, was illustrated in Bhagwant Rao Shir Sagar's story. The father of Bhagwant Rao was a devotee of Vitoba and used to make varis annual trips to Pandarpur. He also had an image of Vittoba at home, which he worshipped. 
After his death, the son stopped everything, the vari, the worship and the shahada ceremony etc. When Bhagwant Rao came to Shirdi, Baba on remembering his father at once said, his father was my friend, so I dragged him, the son, here. He never offered naivedya, this is offering of food, and so he starved Vittal and me, so I brought him here. I shall remonstrate him now and set him to worship. Das Ganu's bath in Prayag The Hindus think that a bath in the holy teeth of Prayag, where the Ganga and Yamuna meet, is very meritorious and thousands of pilgrims go there at periodical times to have the sacred bath there. Once, Das Ganu thought that he should go to Prayag for a bath and came to Baba to get his permission for doing so. Baba replied to him, It is not necessary to go so long. Our Prayag is here. Believe me. Then wonder of wonders, when Das Ganu placed his head on Baba's feet, out flowed streams of Ganga, Yamuna water from both the toes of Baba. Seeing this miracle, Das Ganu was overwhelmed with feelings of love and adoration and was full of tears. Inwardly, he felt inspired and his speech burst forth into a song in praise of Baba and his Leelas. Immaculate Conception of Sai Baba and His First Advent in Shirdi Immaculate Conception of Sai Baba and His First Advent in Shirdi Nobody knew the parents, birth or birthplace of Sai Baba. Many inquiries were made, many questions were put to Baba and others regarding these items, but no satisfactory answer or information has yet been obtained. Practically, we know nothing about these matters. Namdev and Kabir were not born like ordinary mortals. They were found as infants in Mother of Pearls, Namdev being found on the bank Bimrati River by Gunai and Kabir on the bank Bhagirati River by Tamal. Similar was the case with Sai Baba. He first manifested himself as a young lad of 16 under a neem tree in Shirdi for the sake of Bhaktas. Even then, he seemed to be full with the knowledge of Brahman. He had no desire for worldly objects even in dream. He kicked out Maya and Mukti was serving at his feet. One old woman of Shirdi, the mother of Nana Chopdar, described him thus, This young lad, fair, smart and very handsome, was first seen under the neem tree seated in an asan. The people of the village were wonderstruck to see such a young lad practicing hard penance, not minding heat and cold. By day, he associated with none. By night, he was afraid of nobody. People were wondering and asking whence this young chap had turned up. His form and features were so beautiful that a mere look endeared him to all. He went to nobody's door, always sat near the neem tree. Outwardly, he looked very young, but by his action, he was really a great soul. He was the embodiment of dispassion and was an enigma to all. One day, it so happened that God Kandoba possessed the body of some devotee and people began to ask him, Deva, God, you please enquire what blessed father's son is this lad and whence did he come? God Kandoba asked them to bring a pickaxe and dig in a particular place. When it was dug, bricks were found underneath a flat stone. When the stone was removed, a corridor led to a cellar where cow mouth shaped structures, wooden boards, necklaces were seen. Kandoba said, This lad practiced penance here for 12 years. Then the people began to question the lad about this. He put them off the scent by telling them that it was his guru's place his holy vatan and requested them to guard it well. The people then closed the corridor as before. As Ashwatha and Audamba trees are held sacred, Baba regarded this neem tree equally sacred and loved it most. Malsapati and other Shirdi devotees regarded this site as the resting place, Samadhisthana of Baba's Guru and prostrated before it. Three Vadas the site with a neem tree and surrounding space was bought by Mr. Hari Vinayak Sate and on this side a big building styled Sate's Vada was erected. This Vada was the sole resting place of pilgrims who flocked there. A par platform was built round the neem tree and lofts with steps were constructed. Under the steps there is a niche facing south and devotees sit on the par platform facing north. It is believed that he who burns incense there on Thursday and Friday evenings will by God's grace be happy. This vada was old and dilapidated and wanted repairs. The Sansthan has made the necessary repairs, additions and alterations now. Then, after some years, another vada, Dikshit's vada was constructed. Kaka Sahib Dikshit, solicitor of Bombay, had gone to England. He had injured his leg by an accident there. The injury could not be got rid of by any means. Nana Sahib Chandorkar advised him to try Sai Baba. 
So he saw Sai Baba in 1909 AD and requested him to cure rather the lameness of his mind than that of his leg. He was so much pleased with the darshana of Sai Baba that he decided to reside in Shirdi. So he built a wada for himself and other devotees. The foundation of this building was laid on 10 12 19 10. On this day, two other important events took place. Mr. Dada Sahib Kaparde was given permission to return home and the night Arti in Chavadi was commenced. The wada was complete and was inhabited on the Ramanavmi day in 1911 AD with due rites and formalities. Then another wada or palatial mansion was put up by the famous millionaire Mr. Bhuti of Nagpur. Lots of money was spent on this building but the entire amount was well utilized as Sai Baba's body is resting in this wada which is now called the Samadhi Mandir. The site of this mandir had formerly a garden which was watered and looked after by Baba. Three wadas thus sprang up where there was none formerly. Of these, Sate's wada was most useful to all in the early days. The story of the garden attended to by Sai Baba with the help of Vaman Tatya, the temporary absence of Sai Baba from Shirdi and his coming again to Shirdi with the marriage party of Chand Patil, the company of Devidas, Jankidas and Gangagir, Baba's wrestling match with Mohdin Tamboli, residence in Masjid, love of Mr. Dengale and other devotees and other incidents will be described in the next chapter. Bo to Sri Sai. Peace be to all.